Hey guys, and welcome to another of Fourth's Advanced C++ tutorials. Um, we're going to begin a series now on how to set up Lua C++ hybrid programs um, and some of the basics on how to make those more complicated than just the setup. So, um, this format's going to be a little different. Instead of starting with just a C++ file and showing you what I've written, uh, we're going to be going back and forth between C++ and Lua. And we're also going to be seeing me write them, write the code a lot of the time as I'm talking about it. Um, because this is more of a tutorial on, uh, especially this one, it's about uh, having the instructions to set up. Because the setup is sometimes a hassle. And if we can save you the time for figuring out how to set this stuff up, it will it'll be very useful for you. So, first thing to do is um, get your Lewis co source code which you can find just by googling Lua, going to lua.org um, under download. The source code link right here should always give you the most up-to-date source code. If you want, you can not go for a Lua C++ hybrid and just go for a pure Lua and then if you use the free software that'll be um, that'll be better and there's also a live demo right here you can use to mess around with Lua scripts but um, this isn't about the Lua scripts themselves, but about the hybrid setup. So for the hybrid setup, you need to download the source code, which you'll get by following this link here. Okay, so once you've downloaded it, you'll get a folder. You'll unzip it, of course, and um, you'll ha it'll look something like this, probably. And what we really need is to just copy out all of the Lua source code, um, except for the make file. And what we're going to do, I've made a project for this tutorial. We're going to take this to the uh, project directory. Um, right there it is. And we're going to drop it all right inside the, uh, the folder where the source code for the project is going. So there's all of our Lua source. Now, um, normally what I do, and this is all sort of preference stuff, but I like to add a separate folder to include all my Lua files in. Uh, just to separate it out from everything else. Um, and then we'll just add all these files as existing files um, to the project. Now it's important not to add them as existing files before you copy them into the place, into the uh, folder because you need the headers for including. Um, now if you want, alternatively, you can do the work to compile Lua as a library.lib file and then uh, separate out the headers and so you don't have to have the uh, compilation of Lua uh, inside your project but I like to do it this way for many reasons sometimes I it's a hassle sometimes to uh, separate out those header files it can also be a hassle if you want to look at the Lua source code because from time to time if you're feeling brave you can actually um, sift through the Lua source code to track through where a problem is being caused um, I don't really think you'll probably not find a uh, Lua bug, there's not very many, but um, you might be able to find where your bugs are being created inside of the Lua system. It's happened to me a few times, it helps. And um, anyway, uh, if, you, uh, if you do just put them in here, the only disadvantage you have to deal with is that um, it's going to be compiled with your project. Now, the Lua source also comes with two different files that have a um, main function in them. An int main is defined in two of the C files that I've just included in this project. And obviously that's a problem. I don't want either one of those. One of those is for compiling um, the runner and one of them is for compiling a Lua compiler. So I'll show you which ones those are. Lua.c if you were to compile this into an exe, it has an int main right here at the bottom, this would become uh, a Lua executor. You'd be able to just um, use this program to execute Lua scripts directly. Uh, and we are not going to be doing that. So let's get that out of the way. And also Lua C dot C, which is the Lua compiler. If you turn, if you compile this, what you'd get is a program that you can use to compile other Lua scripts. Um, and at some point I'll be showing you how to write your own Lua compiler that's a little more convenient than this one. This one's just sort of basic. You type in the name of the script, it compiles it. But sometimes we're going to actually need more flexibility than that. So, we're going to pop this one out too. So there we go. We've taken out both of our int mains that came with the Lua source. Now, the uh, 
don't worry, that's not like we lost any features. Those were just for compiling different EXEs. All the features are obviously correctly separated into other files. Now to make this compile, I'm going to include my own main function, int main. And if we try to compile it, it should turn out all good. You get a lot of warnings from Lua uh, the first time you compile, but the good thing is you don't have to recompile Lua ever after that um, if you don't want to. Um, unless you edit it for some reason. If you get into editing the base language, which is something that's not unheard of. So, the, um, the compilation works, and obviously this program is going to do nothing. So, let's, uh, let's get set up with Lua. Um, for C++ projects, all we have to do is include Lua.hpp. Um, if you open up that header, you'll see it's actually really just including several important Lua files and uh, wrapping them around an extern C. But um, but really, uh, it's it's convenient to be using C++ since all we have to do is com include this one file that should include everything you need to handle Lua properly. Now, um, to set up your application we're going to have to learn a little bit about how Lua works. And the more you learn about your hybrid program, the more you're going to actually start to understand how Lua works. Um, everything that happens inside of Lua, all the variables and functions, it all, the, the, the call stack, um, it all exists inside of this Lua state object. Lua state is the world in which Lua happens. Now, um, to create a Lua state, the easiest way is to just call Lua L new state. Now this I'll make a quick note about. There's um, all your Lua functions will normally begin with Lua. Um, but there's a few exceptions like the Lua open functions, and the Lua L functions are um, sort a part of the um, I don't know exactly how to how to describe it. It's just a, uh, a secondary library, sort of an auxiliary library that comes for making um, certain common things much easier to do. So Lua L new state makes it very easy for us to just create brand new Lua states that have, are clean with no variables or functions yet. Now we've got our new Lua state. We need to do a little bit of work with it. We need to um, load up all of the uh, library files. Lua L li lib L what's it called? Open open libs. There it is. Now if you look at the Lua open functions. All of these open um, inside of the Lua state. Like I said, when you call Lua L new state, you make a brand new blank state. To add in some of the standard libraries, Lua comes with standard libraries. To add them in, you can call these Lua open functions. But um, there's a lot of those, obviously. Lua L open libs just opens all of them for you and makes sure not to open any twice and stuff like that. So there's Lua L open libs called. We've got um, now all the standard libraries are available. The last thing we need to do is actually lo load in our script and then execute it. So the load function will be Lua L load file. Um, if you were to use Lua load, you would have to do a lot of work to set up um, a reader function, and there's there's just a lot more work to be done um, using the direct stuff. But like I said, the Lua L functions make your job a lot easier in a lot of cases. So Lua L load file lets us directly load in a script. And by the way, if you haven't guessed it, Lua, .lua is the extension, the uh, standard extension for Lua scripts. Um, so now we have loaded in the file. Once you load in a file, what happens is it reads the text, reads each character, and literally compiles it. it Lua is actually, uh, even though it's a scripting language, is also compiled to a byte format. Um, the compilation is fairly quick, and um, once it's been compiled, the running is also fairly quick. And there are ways, like I mentioned before, to pre-compile stuff to make it all that much quicker, and um, we'll look into some of that stuff. But for now, the uh, compilation will just happen internally after we load in the script. So it'll load in the script and compile it, and now it's going to take that compiled, executable raw format and sort of wrap it in a pseudo-function format. So once it's sort of turned into a Lua function that can be called, we can call Lua functions from C. Now, this is um, a little hard to explain before you learn a lot about the stack, but for now, let's just say the Lua call function is able to call Lua functions. So even though we're writing C++ code, 
the functions written in Lua are available to us through the Lua call function. Now obviously how you select which function to call and how you do things with arguments and parameter and returns that's going to be more complicated to explain but for now let's just go with the simple explanation that this will magically be calling the correct function and that correct function is the function that was created by loading in the script and wrapping the executable data in um, a callable function. Now, um, just to uh, give you a little bit of taste of what's going on here, the zero and zero specify the number of arguments and the number of returns. Since it's just a script, I'm not actually going to pass any arguments to the script and I'm not going to get any arguments returned from this script. And finally, as a sort of standard, we're going to pause the application after executing the script to um, make the program wait. And we'll just do our standard method of pausing the program. So if I execute that, we get that response. And what that response actually was, was the program attempting to load in main.lua and finding that there was no script there. So um, one of the things we'll do in later tutorials is learn how to use Lua error handling so that we can get better errors from that. Because as you saw, as soon as an error occurred, it just shut down. And it'll be hard for us to figure out what's going wrong if we don't make the uh, response a little more appropriate. But for now, since we know what our problem is, let's add a Lua script. Um, this is the program I normally use for editing Lua scripts. Um, it's called Notepad++, free to download and install. Um, and it doesn't just do Lua. It's a great program for programmers in general because it allows you to handle all sorts of uh, languages that you probably don't, might not have a good editor for otherwise. Um, it doesn't provide any f features for handling projects, but it does sort of give you configurations and stuff so that you can keep open certain tabs on certain function or uh, scripts while you're doing work. Um, now let's... Uh, create that main script. We'll put our main script right in with our other source code because this is the directory that's it's actually going to be looking for these scripts, uh, at least while we're testing. So it's going to be called main. Make sure that you tell it to make it a .lua file if you're using Notepad++ and then save. So there we go. Now these dashes are comments in Lua. Um, so that's uh, one weird thing to learn about Lua. And like I said, this isn't going to be a Lua tutorial series. It's going to be a Lua C++ hybrid. So we're only going to learn a little bit about Lua in the process. We're going to learn mostly about the Lua setup and some of the interesting properties of the binding process. But after this, we are going to be set, I'm going to be starting a Lua a pure Lua scripting tutorial in which we'll start from the basics of how to script in Lua and work up to advanced uh, Lua programming. And we'll also be doing more C++ at the same time for those of you who are not interested in Lua. So, uh, we have our main script now. Let's try to execute this. Hmm. Seem to have... Seem to have an issue, actually. That shouldn't have happened. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I didn't recompile after we um, got ready. Ah, that was it. So, here is us looking at the main script. Actually, I'm interested now. Let me change the name of this so that we can see what happens if the script isn't there. It might be that I got the wrong response because I think what happened was what, before I added in this Lewis stuff I compiled and I didn't recompile afterwards. And it, There we go. So this is the response we actually get when we're trying to load in a file that isn't there because um, as you see it says attempt to call a string value. What that really means is there an error occurred so a string is on the uh, variable stack. We'll learn more about the Lewis stack at later. And since there's a string on the stack, when I tried to call it, it was actually trying to call a string instead of a function. So let's abort this. Switch back to main.lua. Precompile. And now we'll see, again, it doing nothing and then pausing for me to uh, end the program. Now, we've already done everything we need to do for this tutorial, but let's just, for fun, finish up properly and do our first hello our worst program as a hello world C++ Lua hybrid and there we have it so um, this has been about setting up our Lua scripts next time we'll be going over um, 
some how to uh, do some um, basics, uh, providing your C functions basically to Lua so that Lua can manipulate um, C functions and objects. And then we're going to um, look into how to call Lua functions and manipulate Lua objects from C++. And then we'll learn more about the stack in general and um, how to deal with th things on the stack. And finally, we'll get into some other topics like Lua compilation and uh, um, setting up a good system that you can use for a long time uh, that will sort of scale well for projects. So that was our introduction to C++ Lua Hybrid. Um, see you guys next time.